This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be talking about frozen sets. Since when you start learning Python, frozen sets are a topic which aren't really covered in detail. And it's not surprising considering how rare the use cases are for them, but it's still good to know about what they are and what we can do with them. So. To get started, I'm going to create a normal set and then a frozen set so we can compare them. And this will be a set of type integer, which will equal one, two, three, three, four, four, and five. Then I'm going to duplicate this and create something called frozen for a frozen set. And the type annotation will be set to a frozen set of type integer. Obviously, this is not a frozen set of type integer. So what we're going to do is insert some parentheses, add the frozen set, and we have to insert an iterable here. So I'm just going to insert it as a tuple. Now, if we were to print normal and frozen, we're going to get the wrong output as always, because it's always on a different screen. But if we run the current file, you're going to see that we're going to first get a set and then a frozen set. And you can tell it's a frozen set because it states or it shows or there's frozen set written with the set in parentheses. And the whole reason I inserted this iterable as a tuple is to show you that it, it removes the duplicates just like with a normal set. If you were to insert a normal set here, that works as well. But this might not really convince you that it removes those duplicates because the set will remove it for you before that. Anyway, to save on space, I'm just going to insert normal here. And that will just give us some more lines, or not lines, but space over here. Anyway, a frozen set is a built-in data type. And the major difference between a normal set and a frozen set is that a normal set is mutable while a frozen set is immutable. And what that means is that with a normal set, we can perform some operations such as add, and if we wanted to add, let's say one, we can do that, although, although we wouldn't see the changes because we already have one there. But if we added 10, you would notice that that would be added to the set. And we can also remove things. So here we can type in remove one. And when we print normal, you'll see those changes in the set. Now, if we were to try this with the frozen set, you will notice that none of this is going to work because frozen sets are immutable. We cannot modify them once we create them. The only things we can do is create new sets from them. And we can do that using the union method, which will return the union of sets as a new set. This does not modify the frozen set in any way, but it will return a new result from it. Otherwise we get all the other methods such as the difference, the intersection and the rest of them. None of these modify the frozen set. These are operations that just give us results back from comparing sets. So you might be thinking, who really cares about all of that? Now we know that a set is mutable and a frozen set is immutable, but so what? As I mentioned, a frozen set is immutable, which means the operations you can do with it are quite limited in terms of mutability. But what I didn't mention is that a frozen set is also hashable which means that we can use them as keys in dictionaries. So if we had a dictionary, which we're going to call data of type dictionary, and that was to equal this dictionary over here, we can use our frozen set as a key and Python will not complain about that. And you can see that once we print the data that we will have this frozen set as a key with the value pair. If we were to pass in a normal set, we would get a type error that we have an unhashable type of type set. And that's the major benefit of using a frozen set. It's actually hashable, which means we can use it as a key in a dictionary. But let's create a quick example of where that could actually be useful. So here I'm going to create a variable called read only, which will be of type frozen set of type string. And the frozen set will contain this set, which will hold the value of read. Then we're going to have one called read write of type frozen set. And this will contain read and write. And the third one is going to be admin privileges. So here we will have read write and delete. Now with this, we can create a dictionary that contains these keys. So we will have some roles of type dictionary, which will contain a frozen set 
of type string and a value of type string. And that's going to equal the following dictionary. First, it's going to contain the key of read only, which will be set to viewer. Then we're going to hold something called read write, which will be set to editor. And finally, we'll have something called admin, which will be set to administrator. 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 And with that, we can create some permissions, which will be a frozen set of type string. And what we're going to do is simulate the user input or whatever permissions the user actually has. So pretend you're on a computer, this will be the user settings or the user permissions. And what the user is going to have is this frozen set that contains write and read mode. And with this, we can create a role of type string, and that's going to be a frozen set. Oh, what am I talking about? And that will equal roles.get. And inside here, we can get whatever permissions we have on our computer. Otherwise, if we can't find it, we're going to give it the default value of unknown role. Then we can print the role role. And now if we were to run this, you'll notice that we're going to get the editor rollback because we provided the permissions of write and read. And as you can see, the order didn't even matter in this case, which made it very easy to retrieve the editor rule. Otherwise, if we were to remove the read part, we're probably not going to get anything back because we don't have a rule for that. But if we were to remove the write part, we do have a rule for that. And the role is set to read only, which will give us the viewer role. And if the user happens to have all of these roles inside the frozen set, read, write, and delete, we would get the administrator role back. So as you could see, here we were able to use frozen sets as keys to retrieve certain values from our dictionary. And this is an oversimplified use case. I'm not saying you should force yourself to use frozen sets, but I hope this gives a little bit more insight on how you can use them. And there's one last thing I want to cover because if you were to Google what a frozen set is, you'll probably end up with a search such as this one that claims it to be more memory efficient. And personally, I haven't really found any supporting research that supports that argument enough. For example, according to this Medium article, if you were to import from system the get size of method, and you were to use this on both a set and a frozen set, the set should consume much more memory. But watch what happens when we actually try that out. So here we're going to create a set of type integer. And what I'm going to do is insert a range of 1 million integers. And we're going to do the same thing for the frozen set, which I'll call f1, pass in the frozen set, and turn this into a frozen set. Then we can print the f string of get size of with s1 inside and an equals and the same thing will happen for f1. So this will print this variable name and the actual result together. So that when we run this, what you should notice in the console is that get size of s1 returns this many bytes while the frozen set returns this many bytes. And what's important to note here is that they are exactly the same. You're not saving on memory in this case. So all I'm trying to say with this little experiment is to always test out what you read on the internet for yourself, because it's not always going to be as straightforward as this saves on memory and this is much faster. Both a set and a frozen set uses the same hash table implementation. So even if there is a performance boost, it's probably going to be insignificant. Anyway, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. If you have anything to share about frozen sets or regarding frozen sets, please leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to learn more about the use cases regarding them because personally up to this very day, I have not used them, but that doesn't mean they are pointless. There are people out there that do use them in very specific scenarios. And it's just nice to know how they work in case you do need to use them someday. I'm not saying that they will ever come, but if it does come, now you know exactly what they do and how to use them. Oh, and there's actually one last thing I want to mention before I end this video, and that is that I've created a WhatsApp channel. And here I'm going to post a lot of giveaways, I'm going to post a lot of updates regarding Python. So if you have WhatsApp and you want some Python content on your WhatsApp, feel free to follow my WhatsApp channel. I'm going to leave a link in the description box down below. Just click on that, join, and you'll automatically start receiving updates from my channel. But otherwise, with all that being said, 
as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.